Hey guys, so in this video, I want to talk about smart contracts. In the Web 3.0 world, smart contracts form the basis or the core of the way uh, the entire blockchain or the entire application is going to function or how the transactions will take place. So like I said in the previous video, in Web 3.0, everything is a transaction. And to guide those transactions, we need smart contracts. So let's look at how a Web 2.0 Uber or the Uber that you use right now in the, in the real world, how does it work? Uh, let's take a look at that. So we have a rider, let's say us, who wants to book a cab uh, on Uber. So he has to make a request to the Uber platform, which is owned and operated by Uber, which means in this case, Uber acts as a centralized authority from which all transactions are routed and without any pre-approvals from Uber, nothing on this platform can happen. So it's a centralized authority with all uh, the power and there's a single point of failure as well. Uh, so think of Uber, the app, as having a standardized checklist of uh, the guidelines that have to be met before a rider can actually find a cab or, or a driver. In the sense, you could have a rule, for example, that there need to be at least five drivers in your area before you can, you know, bef before Uber can start choosing a driver for, driver for you. Um, or something like that. I'm just giving you an example. So it has all these rules built in, into the application at, and those rules have to be uh, checked every time the rider uh, gets a driver. So Uber, the company, is a company, right? It has to have a CEO, CTO, COO, board of directors, that means zoom in. And Uber also has a support staff for things that if th something goes wrong, it'll basically give you support. They also have a legal team, which is basically responsible for ensuring that all the internal as well as internal uh, vendors or stakeholders are basically meeting uh, with all the legal requirements for the platform to function. Uh, now, the main problem here, apart from uh, having a centralized authority, apart from having all the power residing with one uh, company, apart from the fact that there's a single point of failure, the main problem that the people have with this kind of a setup is that Uber has all the, everything, the way of functioning of the company is, uh, is not transparent. It's all happening behind a closed door, which is the Uber company, like the way they function. So they can change the rule of engagement. They, think they can change all the rules of engagement with just uh, a click of a button. And that can affect how the entire platform works. I'll give you an example. Let's say a driver whose life, livelihood depends on the platform. Uh, Uber says from tomorrow that the driver is, uh, I'm just giving you a really, really out there or really far-fetched example. Let's say they say the driver is is brown skinned. He's he's from India, uh, and he but he's operating in the U.S. So he will be given less priority uh, as opposed to the drivers who are uh, who are white drivers, right? Just just a very far-fetched example. Now Uber could technically do something like that, right? They can choose change the rules of engagement. Now this is obviously very extreme, the example that I gave you, but they could change the rules of engagement because of which some of the drivers can suffer. And similarly, some of the riders could suffer as well with some of the rules changing. That's the problem that a lot of people have with Web 2.0 companies. That's the problem that people have with having everything centralized. And this is where Web 3.0 or the decentralized way of functioning is coming from, right? So the example that I give you again is, like I said, it's quite extreme, but anything could happen, like a very small thing, for example, uh, drivers who have, who have met uh, their quota of uh, you know, $300 for today, they won't be given more rides, even though this guy is very competent, he's very good, he has a good rating, but Uber wants everybody to have, uh, you know, a good experience, all the drivers to make money. So Uber now starts implementing socialist or communist kind of, uh, you know, policies, and you won't be able to change that. You won't even come to know something like that is happening because everything is happening with a uh, real-time algorithm, and the algorithm can be tweaked, you know that. We all know that we are all programmers. Uh, algorithms can be tweaked, and the governments or the companies uh, or the other outside world will never come to know what's happening uh, in a single line of code on you know and in th tens of thousands of lines of code. Okay, so that's the problem that people have with uh, Web 2.0 companies. With decentralized way, firstly everything has to be uh, open source. Secondly, everything is on the blockchain, so everybody knows what happened. In the sense you would always know which rider booked that cab, which, which driver, and all the conditions that happened to lead to that transaction happening. So everything would exist on the blockchain, imagine, right? So it's open source, it's completely transparent, whatever is happening, you would always have information about it on the blockchain. Every It's transparent in the sense, like it's the second point, it's, it's visible to everybody, everybody can see, everybody can refer to that transaction happening. But the most important thing here is, 
uh, a lot of people then get confused saying like, okay, there's no company, there's no CEO. For example, there's no CEO and CTO of Bitcoin, right? So that kind of, you know, ex that, ex uh, that confuses everybody. Uh, so how, how does a company uh, work? How does a company like uh, an Uber in the Web 3.0 world will work? It'll be basically a decentralized autonomous organization, DAO. We'll talk about DAOs a lot more in, uh, in the upcoming videos. But here I just want to tell you that these companies are decentralized. Nobody, uh, only the people who own the contract or the tokens, they own the company. And the ecosystem, the people in the ecosystem like the drivers, ideally they will be the empowered people who would really own the majority of the functioning of the company or, you know, uh, this enterprise or this platform, whatever you want to call it, right? So all the drivers would have some stake because they will own some of the coins or they will be participant in the economy of this platform and they would basically be owning it. So in the sense, they could also come to the conclusion of, uh, you know, creating the rules by which this entire platform will work. So here we had this Uber company with the help of lawyers, with the help of, uh, you know, their board of directors, they were creating rules of engagement for how the company would work and they could be changed any second. You wouldn't know because it's an algorithm running in the, in the uh, you know, somewhere in, in the company's servers. All, all servers being centralized behind companies, firewalls and all of that. Whereas in a decentralized way, you would have complete transparency. The complete code will be open source. You would know how the function, the, the you know, uh, the code functions, all the algorithms, how they function. And also they will have a set of rules. There will be no central authority, right? And uh, these are the manual of operations. So the smart contract is basically the central uh, part here. The smart, instead of having like people to manage all these uh, guidelines, you would have a smart contract, which will be published as a white paper. Uh, everybody will have access to it. Everybody would know, okay, these are the 10 rules with the help of which a person, a rider finds a cab or a driver on this platform, right? Which is obviously powered by blockchain. And uh, what are those rules? Those rules will be mentioned in something called as a smart contract. And the rules could be, for example, that you have to have five drivers in your area before you can start getting a cab or, you know, before this platform will start finding a cab between them. And then there could be more algorithms or more rules. For example, the, the nearest guy, uh, whoever uh, accepts the request fastest will get to take this rider. Some, something like that, you know, these kind of rules will be there, but they will all be mentioned in the smart contract, visible to everybody, everybody knows. Anytime these rules change, everybody will be notified, they will be even consulted. It's a very democratic uh, democratic way of functioning, right? And uh, so, like I said, these guys can all, uh, all collude and collaborate to change these rules, or they could be governance tokens in the sense they could be nodes, People who are trading in this currency, they, they could launch like an Uber coin or whatever. And people who are trading with this currency, they could form their own nodes. We'll talk about nodes. We'll talk about mining. We'll talk about cryptocurrency trading, all of that. Don't worry. But just remember for the, for the fact that they, they, they can be nodes uh, or some people who have more preference uh, here because they will own majority of uh, the coins. So uh, since they'll have more economic stake in this entire ecosystem, so they can basically get governance tokens, which help them. Uh, shape the future of the direction of the company. But the most important part here is this smart contract, right? Uh, smart contract being the uh, the ultimate set of rules, which is open to everybody. And instead of having human beings uh, set or enforce these rules between people, you have smart contracts that enforce these rules uh, between people or, or how the function or the platform is going to function. So you don't necessarily need a board of directors. You don't necessarily need I mean, these guys uh, who, who have the governance tokens, who have the majority of the, uh, you know, stake uh, of, of the coins are, you can say they are uh, the board of directors, but in this case, it's, everything is different because it's visible to everybody. So whatever you're doing, every, it's visible to everybody. Okay, so that's the whole beauty of having uh, a decentralized Uber. But I'm just giving an example of an Uber. There could be hospitals, uh, hospital systems and there could be financial, uh, you know, platforms like you have exchanges, all of that, everything could be decentralized, everything could be on the blockchain, everything would have a very high level of transparency. So this is how, uh, you know, a smart contract would work in a decentralized way and you would have no central authority, this being the, uh, this being the most important part, no central authority who can dictate, who can change the rules, who can change the game. It's going to be very fair for everybody and people who know, okay, this is how these, uh, you know, this, this is how the rules are made for this particular ecosystem, only then they will enter the ecosystem, right? So nobody's uh, in, in a risk, nobody's taking a huge risk here because they know how exactly how the platform is going to work. So I hope I've been able to explain that. 
uh, there's just so much depth. This is just so much depth here. Uh, and I'm pretty sure I've not been able to cover a lot of things, but and I want to. Uh, but I don't know how, what's the right way of explaining it to you because I'm also trying to simplify all of these concepts into very uh, understandable, digestible format. So, uh, and I'll create more videos to help you get an understanding of the inner workings of these kind of platforms that are coming up right now. Uh, but I hope I've been able to explain at least some little bit to you, okay? And I'm teaching you all of this because these are just concepts that are going to help you when you start coding and start building actual projects with blockchain, right, with Solidity or something, because I'm also teaching Solidity on the side. So I just wanted you to understand these concepts so that you can, uh, you know, understand uh, how these things function at a much deeper level. So essentially, smart contract is looking at the transactions between riders and drivers, but it has a rule of how these transactions would occur and everything in, blockchain, in Web 3.0 is a transaction. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video. Do subscribe because you'll get awesome value like this. You'll come to know when, uh, whenever I launch a video like this, you'll come to know, right? You'll be notified. So you have to subscribe to this channel and show your support. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video.